George R. R. Martin has said that clues to the ending can be found in book one. Some of the final words of chapters hold such clues. In this video, we're going to look at 14 of the 73 chapters in book one. Number one, as an example, the last words of Ned Stark's very first chapter are when he's down in the crypts with King Robert. He looked at the stone figures all around them, breathed deep in the chill silence of the crypt. He could feel the eyes of the dead. They were all listening, he knew. And winter is coming. Nothing big, but some pretty heavy foreshadowing to the return of the White Walkers. Speaking of which, let's go back to the very first chapter. Number two. The very first chapter ends with the wolf pup scene. As they ride away, John pulled up halfway across the bridge. Then he turned back and he found Ghost and he said, he must have crawled away from the others or been driven away, their father said. Now keep in mind, the dire wolf is a sigil of House Stark. So just like Targaryens or dragons, Starks are often referred to as wolves. If the Night King was the bastard born in the crypt of Winterfell, then he too is a wolf. And if that wolf was the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, brought down by Bran the Breaker, possibly his half-brother, then the Night King is just like Ghost, driven away by his family. We'll find out soon. Number 3. King Tyrion It's a scene with Jon Snow and Tyrion outside during the Feast of Winterfell. After Tyrion says that line about all dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes, he turns and he walks away, quote, and with that he turned and sauntered back into the feast, whistling a tune. When he opened the door, the light from within threw his shadow clear across the yard, and for just a moment, Tyrion Lannister stood tall as a king. Number 4. The Jon Snow Reveal Catelyn's second chapter ends with Ned telling her that he's taken the children, all except for Rob and Jon, he's taken them down to King's Landing. And she freaks out. John must go. He cannot stay here. There's a heated debate, and then Maester Lewin tells him that another option has presented itself. John has shown interest in taking the black. So the chapter ends with Ned saying that it will be a fortnight before they are ready to depart, and he would sooner let John enjoy those last few days. Summer will end soon enough, and childhood as well. When the time comes, I will tell him myself. Ned's referring to a conversation that he plans on having with Benjamin about John taking the black. But in hindsight, there's clearly a hidden meaning to that. Ned telling John about his mother. Number 5. Ned Stark's fifth chapter ends with him telling Lord Peter that perhaps he was wrong to distrust him. And Littlefinger's response was, Lord Baelish, perhaps I was wrong to distrust you. Distrusting me was the wisest thing you've done since you climbed off your horse. That has certainly paid off, proving that last lines of chapters can be important. Number 6. Ned's tenth chapter ends with this line. Put on the badge, and if you ever take it off again, I swear to the mother I'll pin the damn thing on Jamie Lannister. Now, I've got an entire video scripted on this already. Hopefully I get to it. There are a lot of clues that Jamie Lannister ends the story as the final hand of the king. Here's one example. The show added in this scene here, the very first scene with Jamie and Cersei, and listen to what Jamie says. You should be the hand of the king. That's a none I could do without. The days are too long, the lives are too short. So yeah, I'm expecting this song to end with Tyrion as king, hinted at, as we said earlier, in the final words of Jon Snow's very first chapter, and Jamie as his hand, hinted at in the final words of this chapter. Number 7. Edward's 11th chapter also has some foreshadowing. It's the scene where he sends out Lord Beric to seek justice against Sir Gregor Clegane. Keep in mind, Sir Ilan Payne is the king's justice. So Varys points out how he saw Sir Ilan standing in the back of the hall and he did not look pleased. Because he's the justice, yet Ned's sending out Lord Beric to do the king's justice. Varys then says that he hopes that Sir Ilan outgrows his disappointments as well. He does so love his work. Those are the final words, and lo and behold, Sir Ilan carries out King Joffrey's justice on Ned, not long thereafter. Number 8. Littlefinger's Death Clue Edward's 12th chapter ends with him trying to get Littlefinger onto his side. Littlefinger does the whole spinning the dagger thing, but in the books, the very last words of the chapter are, smiling, he plucked up the dagger and offered it to Ned, hilt first. The dagger was pointing at him, and at least in the show, the dagger was used to kill him. As Scripps and I were actually chatting about last night, Bran hands Arya the dagger the exact same way in Season 7. To be fair, it's the safest way to hand someone a dagger, but since those are the final words of a chapter, they may have foreshadowed Littlefinger's death by the dagger, and thus, this scene here in the show may foreshadow Bran's death by that same dagger. 
I say no, but it is fishy. It's worth noting. Number nine. This next one's tricky. I made an entire video on a hypothesis that the mountain cuts off Arya's arm. But as he does that, she tosses the dagger from one hand to the other, then shoves it into his eye. Something similar happens in the final words of Lord Eddard's 14th chapter. It's the scene where Littlefinger betrays Ned in the Great Throne Room. The fourth to last sentence of that chapter has Sandor cutting off the sword hand of one of Ned's men, and the very next sentence has Littlefinger shoving the dagger up under Ned's chin. I did warn you not to trust me. Alright, number 10. Arya's fourth chapter ends with her escaping Sir Meryn Trant, quote, Her footsteps send soft echoes hurrying ahead of her as Arya plunged deeper into the darkness. It's referring to literal darkness, but we know now that poor little Arya's journey gets pretty dark. Four more to go. Number 11. Bran's sixth chapter ends with Hodor whimpering, Hodor? Hodor, Bran agreed, wondering what it meant. How did no one catch that line, the final words of a chapter? We should have been able to decipher that 20 years ago. Well played, George. Well played. Number 12. Daenerys' eighth chapter ends with a very subtle clue to her death. And number 13. Danny's ninth chapter has the clue that most fans already know about. But we'll get to those in more detail in the next video. So here's the last one. Number 14. Don't worry. Danny's death won't be the end to her song. The final words of book one are beautiful. And for the first time in hundreds of years, the night came alive with the music of dragons. But there's something even better in Daenerys' final chapter. This is huge. Check this out. Sir Jorah Mormon and Danny's fate was foreshadowed towards the end of the final chapter of Book One. So, it's easy for people to have bent the knee once she survived the fire, right? Well, before Danny became the mother of dragons, she turned to the three young warriors of her cause. To Jogo, she gave her silver handled whip that was her bride gift and named him Ko. She asked his oath that he would live and die as blood of her blood, riding at her side to keep her safe from harm. He took the whip, but was confused. Khaleesi, he said hesitantly, this is not done. It would shame me to be blood rider to a woman. She ignored his words. If I look back, I am lost. To Ego, she gave the dragonbone bow that was her bride gift and named him Ko. Asked him for his oath that he should live and die as blood of her blood, riding at her side to keep her safe from harm. Ego accepted the bow with lowered eyes. I cannot say these words. Only a man can lead a Kalasar or name a Ko. Rikoro, Danny said, turning away from the refusal. You shall have the great Arak that was my bride gift, with hilt and blade chased in gold. And you too, I name my co, and ask that you live and die as blood of my blood, riding at my side to keep me safe from harm. You are Khaleesi, Rikoro said, taking the Arak. I shall ride at your side to Vaisdoth Rock, beneath the Mother of Mountains, and keep you safe from harm until you take your place with the crones of the Dash Kaleen. No more can I promise. She nodded, as calmly as if she had not heard his answer, and turned to the last of her champions. Sir Jorah Mormont, she said, first and greatest of my knights, I have no bride gift to give you, but I swear to you, one day you shall have from my hands a long sword, like none the world has ever seen, dragon forged and made of Valyrian steel, and I would ask for your oath as well. You have it, my queen, Sir Jorah said, kneeling to lay his sword at her feet. About to serve you, obey you, to die for you if need be. Whatever may come, whatever may come. For now, take that as you will.